every sports nutrition question you may have will probably be answered in this series. Welcome back to Inc. Nutrition, where we are all about mind, body, and food. My name is Jack, registered dietitian, and I'm here to help you translate the science of nutrition to help you improve your health. So typically we talk about, you know, a broad range of nutrition related topics. However, we do have a pretty dynamic team of dietitians at Inc. Nutrition where we all specialize in different areas. And I currently and personally specialize in sports nutrition. So I've been an athlete my entire life. I love working with athletes and that is really my area of expertise. So I thought, you know, for a series, a five part series on YouTube now, we're gonna talk all about sports nutrition. Okay, so this first part, number one, we are going to get into macronutrients, carbs, proteins, fats, what are they? Uh, how do they function? Why do we need them? And how much do we need as an athlete to perform optimally? So before diving into really specific nutrition recommendations, I think it's really important to just have a foundational understanding of what fuels our bodies to move. There are three macronutrients that are capable of providing us with usable energy, which include carbohydrates, protein, and fat. When digested, these nutrients are broken down into smaller compounds and go through you know, a series of metabolic pathways to eventually yield ATP, which is the readily available form of energy. And now anything with calories is made up of macronutrients. So you'll often hear me use the words calories and energy interchangeably, and that's why. Now, athletes need sufficient calories in order to perform optimally. That is rule number one. And specific macronutrient needs will depend on the intensity and duration of exercise. So it's really important to know that as intensity of activity increases, so does your body's dependence on carbohydrates for fuel. At low intensities, your body will primarily use fat for energy. And when it comes to protein, amino acids contribute very little to fuel, unless no carbohydrates are available and it absolutely has to, but this is a less efficient energy yielding pathway. So the big takeaway here is that if you plan to regularly exercise at longer durations and at higher intensities, you need to prioritize consuming enough high quality carbohydrates on a daily basis. So as an elite athlete, you cannot be afraid of carbohydrates. Please enjoy them. However, there are different types, different forms of carbs. And I think it's really important to know those differences and just to know when to have you know, these different types of carbs. So if you look over here, you can see in general, there's really two main categories, okay? And it is on a spectrum, so keep that in mind. But it goes from simple carbs to complex, and it really has to do with the chemical structure. And it also has to do with how the carbs are absorbed. Okay, so simple carbohydrates are rapidly digested. They're broken down very quick in the body and they're an immediate source of energy. They have very little fiber. And so things like, you know, Gatorade or any sweet beverages or white bread or energy chews or juices, honey, syrup, you know, dates, uh, some fruits, things like that are, you know, think of things that are really sweet, okay, high in sugar. And then as you get into like that middle ground, okay, these are kind of in between simple and complex. You have some white pastas, some oats, pretzels, you know, some wheat breads, uh, most fruits. And then complex carbs are mostly going to be whole grains, vegetables, um, sweet potatoes, dried fruit, all kinds of grains, quinoa, barley, brown rice, squash. And these are slowly digested. Uh, and so there's a time and place to have these. Most of the time you want to prioritize these complex carbohydrates. However, if you are an endurance athlete, you're training every day uh, or even multiple times a day, you definitely want all the carbs you can get from a variety of sources. Also, if you are going into an activity and you're hungry, right? You need something that's quickly 
absorbed and digested to you know lead to immediate energy that's when you can have some simple carbohydrates but we'll get into more of the nutrient timing like when to have these foods in um, our next episode so of course the next big question is how much do you need how many grams of carbs do you need on a day-to-day -day basis well this is going to be pretty personalized all right depending on your your weight right your size also the type of athlete you are what kinds of activities you're doing however in general you can kind of use this as a guide okay if you're in that low intensity range you're performing you know uh, less than an hour of weight training or endurance activity a day aim for one to two grams of carbs per pound of body weight per day and then it just goes up from there so you know moderate intensity one to two hours of activity a day go for that two to three grams of um, of carbs per pound of body weight a day and then three to four grams and then if you are performing four plus hours a day of endurance activity like you're maybe trained for a marathon or an Ironman triathlete, then you're going to be at that high, high end of the carb intake, four to five grams uh, per pound of body weight a day. So what does that really look like? You know, grams I know are just kind of numbers. And unless you, you know, have studied grams and know what that looks like in food, you may be a little bit confused. So this is just a little bit of a guide to, to reference. Okay. The first uh, left column here you can see mostly whole grains and that's where a lot of these high quality carbs are going to be coming from in your diet so for example a cup of cooked quinoa 35 grams a cup of brown rice 50 grams buckwheat 30 grams um, whole wheat pasta all right um, one cup of that cooked 30 grams cereals all right a cup of that in general is going to be about 25 grams so this you know will give you an idea of how many grams are in your food and then the next category is going to be uh, vegetables, right? Um, and then fruits. So just use this, get an idea, right? And aim for that target range based on the intensity of your activity every day. Next macronutrient is protein. We all love to talk about protein, especially in the fitness world. So let's answer some questions. First off, the functions. What does protein do? Well, it does a lot in the body. In general, it helps rebuild muscle tissue, okay? That gets broken down when we exercise. It has a lot to do with maintaining water and fluid balance, uh, even hormone regulation. It also plays a major role with our immune health. So you gotta make sure you get enough, but you don't need too much. I think a lot of people overdo it on the protein. So we'll talk about how much is optimal. Um, protein, when had in the right amounts as an athlete will definitely help you maximize benefits from exercise, minimize the loss of muscle mass and contribute to muscle growth, optimize recovery time, and even reduce the risk of injury and illness. And just briefly, you know, this is what happens. Okay, so when you exercise, especially when you're doing like resistance training, like weightlifting, you experience uh, these micro tears in your muscle tissue and then muscle protein synthesis is elevated. And in order to take advantage of that effect of muscle protein synthesis and lead to muscle growth, you have to have an adequate amount of protein in your diet, okay? So that's ultimately how it benefits you as an athlete. Uh, now, protein powder versus real food, both can be good. There's a time and place to have them. In general, I like to recommend to always follow this food first philosophy. However, if you're struggling to meet your protein needs, uh, it's it's recommended to have some protein powder and maybe a, a protein shake in that form, right, throughout your day. So similar to carbohydrates, your protein needs should be personalized based on the type of activity that you're doing and you know your overall size and body weight. So if you look at the bottom here, you can see that if you're sedentary, you know you're not doing a whole lot of activity. Maybe you're resting and recovering, or perhaps you're injured. Uh, 0.4 grams of carbs per pound of body weight a day is a good rule of thumb. If you're doing some consistent endurance training on a day-to-day -day basis, bump that up to 0.6 grams. And if you're consistent with weight training, right, you're breaking down a lot of that muscle tissue, aim for 0.7 grams per pound of body weight a day. And then if you're doing both, high endurance, doing a lot of running and a lot of weightlifting every single day, 
then you can go all the way up to 0.8 grams uh, per pound of body weight per day. Some people, especially in like the bodybuilder world, I've heard like to recommend a full gram per pound of body weight. I really think that's excessive and it won't benefit you going that high, okay? Now those numbers are just kind of based on the literature, the evidence, right? But I think a good just general guideline is to aim for 20 to 35 grams of protein per meal uh, throughout the day. And then maybe around 10 grams of protein per snack. Okay, that would be a good place to start. Now what are the best food sources of protein? Well, you can check out this guide, a little cheat sheet here. In general, the best quality of protein is gonna be coming from animal sources. So foods like eggs, dairy products, yogurt, milk, you know, seafood, tuna, shrimp, crab, fish, and then your meats, like pork, beef, also poultry. These are all the best sources because they have all the essential amino acids and the amino acids are bioavailable. So they're easy for the body to absorb and metabolize. Now I'll let you kind of look at, you know, what equates to what in terms of quantity of food and grams of protein, but just a few to point out, like three ounces of most meat, okay, which is about the size of your palm for a serving, will be about 20 to 25 grams of protein. Really good source. And then you can see some others. One egg is about six grams. So it's a good idea to just become familiar with common foods, right, and what one serving equates to. Now moving on to the next category, these are good quality. You still need these in this category, which are all plant-based protein. I really am a fan of plant-based. I think they provide some nutrients that the animal products don't, okay? So that's why it's really good to have both. Now, if you are vegan or vegetarian, it's very important, especially as an athlete, to prioritize these specific foods in your diet. So beans, quinoa, nuts, seeds, soy products like tempeh and soy milk and tofu, edamame, right, lentils. These are gonna be the best sources. And then this last little uh, row here are complementary sources of protein. So when you pair certain foods, certain plant-based proteins, you can make a complete protein. You don't have to always focus on this, but it's just kind of good to know that when you pair like grains and beans, okay, like so like rice and beans, you're gonna get a complete protein. They're kind of sharing amino acids, right, to, to make sure you get everything there. Uh, peanut butter and bread, oats and nuts you know, uh, bread and hummus, soy milk and cereal, just some examples to make it complete. And the last macronutrient is of course, fat. Fat tends to get unfortunately a bad reputation. And I, the truth is fat is really needed for a healthy diet and athletes need it too. Really good source of high quality calories when coming from, you know, a variety of foods. And the functions right, of fat in the body, there's so many. Just to give you an example, they can help you absorb essential vitamins. They can promote optimal brain health, regulate inflammation, protect our vital organs, regulate and control appetite, and they can even become a really important fuel source for uh, endurance athletes. If you're performing longer than like an hour and a half, two hours in an endurance activity, you'll probably use a lot of fat for fuel inside your body. So how much do you need? In general, aiming for about 30% of total calories coming from fat is a good idea. And you want a combination of different types of fats. You want some saturated fat and some unsaturated fat. Unsaturated fat is one that you probably are not getting enough of unless you are really into your, your nutrition and you're paying attention to it. Uh, so that's the category I, I tend to recommend more they have a lot of anti-inflammatory properties uh, they can also support recovery as an athlete so foods like nuts seeds fish tahini that's just like sesame seed paste olive oil avocado nut butters seed butters hummus olives flaxseed oil and then of course fish oil that's the best source of omega-3 fatty acids which is pretty hard to get in your diet most people don't get enough so consider supplementation of omega-3s so in summary, you know, macronutrients, carbs, proteins, and fat equal calories, calories equal energy, and you need energy if you wanna perform as an athlete. And it's important to fuel though for the specific work that's required. So if you check out this handout here, you know, your training volume, duration, and intensity varies, right, from day to day as an athlete. So your food intake should adjust 
to your training load based on how hard or easy it is. So as again, and I said this in the beginning, but as exercise intensity and duration increases, your body prefers to use carbs for fuel. So on hard training days, prioritize hydration, of course, and then meals that are high in carbs and moderate in protein and fat. On rest days, focus less on the carbs and more on high quality protein, fat, and fiber. So if you look at these two plates here, it'll give you an idea of what your meals should look like based on how active you are throughout that day. So on the less active days, it's pretty balanced. There's a good variety of fruits, vegetables, protein, whole grains, healthy fats, and then you can see the big difference. The only thing that really changes uh, is the number, the, the total amount of carbohydrates that you're having. You can see foods coming from whole grains, starchy vegetables like brown rice, oats, quinoa, wheat bread, wheat pasta, sweet potato squash. Those are the kinds of foods that you wanna have you know, more of on the more active days, especially if you're running and doing a lot of endurance based activity. Woo. Okay. That was a lot of information. I know, but I hope it uh, serves you well. I hope it was valuable for you. And this is a, you know, just a guide. If you want a personalized, you know, nutrition plan when it comes to macronutrient intake and a meal plan, definitely reach out and we can do a one-on-one -on -one consultation. But just remember too, this is just part one of our sports nutrition series. So next week we'll get into what's called nutrient timing. So we'll talk about when it's appropriate to have meals based on the type of activity uh, before, during, and after. I think it's gonna be really helpful. Again, my name is Jack, sports dietitian. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.